That mechanism by which the animal <laughs> starts doing that, what it's doing is it's unwinding the trauma. It's on what the body wanted to freak the fuck out, but it got stuck in that state. And so you could just imagine like a bottle, right? Like a bottle got screwed on and all the energy is stuck in that bottle. And then after the event, that bottle opens up, the top of the bottle opens up and then all the freaking, all the freak out happens. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, glad to be here. So I dive in Panama City. I do spear fishing, right? So I guess this is where you go down with a spear and you and you throw it at fish, right? He goes spear fishing, exploring. And in 2009, he had a 11 foot bull shark steal some flounder from his hand. So I could just imagine you down there with your spear, you swimming around and shit. You got the flounder in your hand, right? And then a bull shark came and just snatched that out of your hand. <laughs> That's some scary stuff. He says, it came out of nowhere and it took me a while to get back into the water. But to this day, it caused me to be pretty unsettled, very jumpy. I, I hear pushing yourself to face your fears help, which I've been doing since. I still don't feel like the situation has really improved for me. Any advice, any book or YouTube recommendations, uh, thank you. So you, you're suffering from people call PTSD <laughs> and PTSD isn't just for, you know, soldiers that came back from war. PTSD is your body's autonomic response to a, to a past experience that gets triggered today. Right? So like, say for example, like when you were young, your dad, your, your mom, that's it. Cause dads don't slap dads. That's dads. dads what did dads do? Take out the belt? My dad had a belt, right? He would spank us with the belt. My aunt used to spank us with a, with a vine. We had vines growing on the side of our house. But anyway, let's say your mom smacked you, right? Your mom, she had a habit of just smacking you and you say something wrong, pop, right? And so you had that happen, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times when you were a kid. And now when you grow up and any, anytime somebody goes like this, right? Maybe they're scratching their ear, you flinch. Right. Because you think you're going to get slapped. That's a PTSD response. And that's a kind of like that's an overt one. I'm kind of like being facetious. But a lot of times we have very subtle mind shift changes, physiology changes, dilation in the eyes, deepening of breath, shortening of breath, rapid breathing, rapid heart rate cramping in the muscles of the shoulders, the face, the you know, like a tick. Right. Cramping of the, uh, the muscles in the face, the hands, any, any unconscious physiological response to a current event that was downloaded into your system, right? That was programmed into your system from a past experience is PTSD, right? Post-traumatic stress syndrome. And we all have it. We all have various different forms of post-traumatic stress syndrome. Some more, some more, um, pre some more obvious than others. Some it like you know it, it ruins their life, and some it just makes them make weak decisions, poor decisions, uh, or or they're afraid of things, right? Like you are right now, right? That's pretty traumatic. You're down there in that water, and that bull shark comes and almost bites your hand off. That will scare the shit out of somebody, and so. I remember studying, uh, when I was really big into bioenergetics, I was studying the work of this guy, um, Peter Levine. You might want to check him out. Peter Levine and, and another guy with an Italian name. These guys were like experts in post P PTSD. I got a, a bunch of really good books. I need to go pull them out on PTSD. And so it's a, it's a crazy thing that happens. Let me see if I could remember the physiological uh, shifts that happen when you go through that experience. He says that when you, the way PTSD embeds itself or programs itself into your nervous system is that you have to go into a shock. You go into a state of shock. When someone's in a state of shock, that's when the trauma is embedding itself into the into your nervous system. And a state of shock looks like this. Because you ever know somebody's in shock, they're frozen, right? Freeze. You got, you got fight, you got flight, and you got freeze, right? 
And so when you're in that freeze state, right, after something really fucking crazy happens, he says that it's like when you go into a car, putting your foot on the, on the, on the brake and putting your other foot on the gas. So like you're stopped, you're frozen, you can't go anywhere, but the engine is revving. <laughs> right? That is a crazy stress on the nervous system. It's, it's stopped because you're <gasps> frozen, but there's a whole lot of revving going on, right? And that's the mechanism by which PTSD embeds itself into your nervous system, right? So just imagine that shark came at you, but you, you had your one foot on the brake because like you're scared as fuck, you don't wanna move. But then the other foot was on the gas because it's like adrenaline is just pumping. <gasps> so you're frozen and you're, and you're revving, right? So what that does is it creates a whole like, a whole, they showed like in the brain how it creates like all these brand new no, motor pathways, right? Like an explosion happens in the brain of chemicals that just open up all new different pathways, right? And it kind of, it like, it can screw you up. It can screw you up. Now, Peter Levine specifically says that in nature, there's a mechanism by which we release that trauma. And in animals, it happens almost instantly. That's why the name of his book, I think, is called Walking the Tiger. And so what he recognized in nature is so funny because you'll see how this all relates to bioenergetics. In nature, when an animal, he shows like a bunch of videos, and you could go look it up on YouTube, like animals that are shocked and shaking, right? Shocked and shaking. And so what will happen is like, say for example, a deer is, uh, a couple of deers are running around and a lion comes out of nowhere, right? A gazelle and a lion, and the lion comes and wah, and like once is attacking all the lions. One of the, one of the gazelles gets knocked over but he didn't get killed. He just gets knocked over and then he lays there. And the lion just forgets because he's laying there. He's like, all right, well, this guy ain't no fun. So he goes chasing the other ones. That lion, that gazelle's just laying there. That, that gazelle is in, a, is in a shock. It's in a freeze state, right? It is just like, I, like you when that shark was coming. You had his, his foot is on the brake and it's on the gas. He's like, he's like laying there still, but there's a whole lot of shit going on. What will happen naturally is that line that uh, gazelle will get up later and it'll start shaking. <laughs> right? It'll, it'll, before it even gets up sometimes, it'll just... <laughs> boom, and then it'll get to its feet and, gall and gallop away. And you'll see this time and time again. Go look on YouTube. I remember when I was... Look at Peter Levine and all this. I'm telling you, I'm not making this shit up. So uh, that mechanism by which the animal <laughs> starts doing that, what it's doing is it's unwinding the trauma. It's the body wanted to freak the fuck out, but it got stuck in that state. And so you could just imagine like a bottle, right? Like a bottle got screwed on and all the energy is stuck in that bottle. And then after the event, that bottle opens up, the top of the bottle opens up, and then all the, freaking, all the freak out happens. This happens naturally to people too, but we, we don't do it because, you know, because we're, we're, we're conditioned not to. So like when something f like really fucking uh, uh, crazy happens, after the event, people, you, like a lot of ambulance drivers will talk about this. They'll be like, yo, somebody got shot and you know, they're pretty cool, they're pretty calm. They're like, oh, oh my God, there's a bullet in me. Boom. And they'll just be normal. They'll walk into the, into the uh, ambulance. They'll lay down. And then like five minutes later, they'll be like, ah, 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 ah. They, start freaking, they start freaking out. And so what do they do in the ambulance? Well, they strap you down and they put a sedate, they sedate you. They put, they put a needle in you and shut you the fuck up. And what does that do? That's like kindly taking the bottle cap. Let's just put that trauma back in there, buddy. You can deal with that later. Right when they give you pills at the psychologist because he's still freaking out every time you hear fireworks go off or somebody drop a book, <gasps> right? Because it was never it was never fully processed. The trauma was never fully processed. Look this stuff up, man. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. It's so fascinating. PTSD, all this trauma related stuff, 
uh, trauma release exercises, TRE. Look up TRE, trauma release exercises. The author's name is like Berducci or something, like that, some Italian name. And he gives you a lot of exercises, but it's, it's basically bioenergetics. It's basically bioenergetics. And so when you have that trauma trapped in your nervous system, and it gets triggered every time you go by the water and you can't get in or you don't want to go in. What you've got to do is physically release the, the, uh, the trauma. You have to change your physiology. Right now, you're not, you're not as freaked out as some people might be because you say you're still getting in the water. But what you need to do is notice. You need to notice how, do your, how your physiology responds to these situations. And rather than trying to think yourself out of it, right? Because that's the, that's the route that we go. It's like, well, you know, just don't think about it or think something else or it's all up in your head, it's not in your head. It's not in your head at all, bro. It's not in your head, it's in your goddamn body. It's in your body. And so you gotta get it out of the body, but the first place at this point, I mean, that was like, what, 2009? That's like 10 years ago, right? 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, it was a long fucking time ago. More than 10 years ago, right? You now are at the point where you need to, when you're about to get into the water, L notice your breathing. Just notice your breathing. Notice your notice your physiology. Right. Notice your heart rate. Notice notice your neck if it's getting tight. Just notice your body, and then do your best. Look, I'm telling you, it looks sounds crazy. It looks yeah. crazy, but when you start to feel that tension in your throat or in your solar plexus or in your feet or wherever you notice it, right? You gotta open up your breath and just do this. <laughs> what are you doing? You're doing exactly what the freaking animal does. But you're doing it consciously, right? You're doing it consciously. And you're, kind, you're doing two things. By, you know, it sounds like I'm just making noise to, for the fun of making noise. Oh, Elliot just likes to be a retard. <laughs> but what, when you make that sound, you're... you're your out breath is, is relaxed. Making sounds that way, especially when you're bouncing, is an out breath focused movement. And so just make a little noise. <laughs> right? I know all your friends in uh, Panama City are gonna be like, what the fuck is going on with Steven? Steven done lost his mind. But you could do it very subtle, you could do it very easily. And look, bro, you're already getting back in the water, right? from what I understand, it's not that big a deal. It comes to your mind, but what I'm telling you is, it's not, the, the issue is not in your head, the issue is in your body. And so you might want to approach it from that perspective. Great question, weird answer. Hope that helps, dude. Don't. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.